I am thrilled and delighted to be joined by uh, a friend, a colleague, a man I absolutely thoroughly enjoy talking to because I always learn something. Oscar van den Weinhard, whose name I never get right, but I'm delighted to get the opportunity to chat to you today, Oscar. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Colm, and it's good to see you. Thank you for uh, for asking me uh, to to be part of your of your wonderful show, which I admire a lot. So, thank thank you. Um, now here here we are, and I, I imagine at this point the um, Nakata folks are are in America and North America, and uh, where where the, the the home base is, shall we say, are probably asleep. Uh, we are here in, in Europe and uh, we've been attending the, this virtual conference. And uh, what has that experience been like for you? Well, first of all, I wish that I was asleep now, too, because it's, you know, I've said this to more people sort of in, in the last couple of days, but I'm experiencing a jet lag sort of at home, which is weird um, because knowing that everyone would assume that I would go to the States for the conference. I felt free to sort of block time in my calendar. And then again, sort of most of it is happening in the late afternoon or during the evening anyways. So I've, I've, I've been able to attend quite a few sessions and other events sort of around the conference. But then you, it's, it's this weird experience where when you're in a session, you're really feeling like you're there almost. But particularly uh, when the chat is open, when you can sort of say, hey, hey, hey you're here too, how are you? Um, I understand that the chat cannot always be open, um, but um, but anyway, so you feel like you're there, and then the session is over. Oops! And it's like you're 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 warping back to sort of being sort of at your own desk, sort of in, in my home, sort of um, twelve o'clock in the evening, sort of or later, and then I'm so sort of sort of hyped by it all that even when the last session is over, I cannot go to bed right away, which is the same when I'm at a conference. But then at a conference, what you do is you, you know, you're in a town that you've never been to most of the time. So you you seek out your friends and you, you spend more time um, socializing and, and of course having deep and profound conversations about the nature of academic advising globally. Um, now I'm just sitting behind my desk and 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 sort of really sort of needing time to get sort of to slow down again and then say, I need to go to bed because it's two o'clock in the morning now. So uh, that's been part of the experience. So yes, um, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a little bit like you, because as you said, because our American friends um, are, are hopefully for them still sound asleep, uh, if sort of depending on where you are, sort of in the really early sort of morning there. But, um, but it, it, I think it's an amazing phenomenon, and I think it sort of it is it is amazing in a in a good way that it really means that so much more than than I expected of what really defines sort of the Nakada conference experience sort of is available to us now, even even though we're in this weird setting, sort of and. Um, I, I I sort of I tend to be rather skeptical about technology and, and, and online things, and I really value very much the ability of, of sort of seeing someone face to face and 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 um, you know knowing that you're actually sensing that you're in the same room, but sort of somehow, uh, and it, and that's a huge compliment to to the executive office of Nakata really, and and the organizing committee. Um, as long as stuff's going on, sort of, you know, also navigating that app, checking the social wall, sort of trying desperately and, and totally pointlessly to gain points in the event game, I'm ranking 200, I think, sort of, um, so no goodie bag for me, but, um, and then going to the sessions, also the on-demand sessions, it all sort of, sort of works. And then, as I said, sort of, when all of that is over, you're by yourself again. And then you also feel that yeah, what we really need is is an opportunity um, to actually get together and to to process this. And um, but but I have to say one of the things that I found remarkable so far is sort of looking at the social wall and also some of the events where you could actually talk to each other, like social events, to see that there were many people there 
who all shared that this was the first time that they attended an Akata conference and that they were enjoying it so much. Um, and um, there was one person, sort of Michelle, if you're looking, sort of yesterday evening, we had these uh, Nakata stories, um, uh, this, this Nakata story session, um, where I could see that if you're a first timer, you're thinking, I'm not going to go there. This is where sort of the veterans are, you know, who, who have the big anecdotes of 20 years ago and who am I? But there were people there as well um, who's, who, who actually actively saw that out and said, so probably thinking, I want to hear those stories because I want to become part of this. And I, I, I really applaud both the organizers of create for creating the environment in which they in, in which people feel encouraged to do so and also all the first time sort of attendees who who take advantage of that who sort of who are not just you know there's the, situations like this it's so easy to sort of be quiet and hide and sit behind your desk and be on no completely unnoticed but to really sort of engage with it all uh, yeah i've I've, I've, I found that rather special. And having said that, you know, with, with many conferences still sort of fresh in my memory, I'm really hoping that, you know, some of us will be able to get to Athens in the summer of next year, and that we will be able to go to Cincinnati um, in the fall of next year. Um, I don't know, but so overall, it has been sort of a really positive experience. More so, I admit, than I thought it would be. That's a very long answer to your question. No, it, it, it's a great and insightful answer, though, and I, I think that it it you're you're spot on. I mean, I, I do think there has been a wonderful level of engagement. It, it undoubtedly has missed the, the the social socialization aspect to it. And I, I do think that it's it's funny. Because my experience of of going to <clears throat> Nakata conferences or, or 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 you know higher ed conferences in ways is that you, you do end up having conversations about higher ed about advising even afterwards and yeah. and 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 genuinely deep in depth conversations in between stories about life and in between Paddy Irishman jokes absolutely but it, it, it is part of it and and that is something that um we you know. We got, we got moments of I think um, particularly in in that first um, you know global lounge uh, meeting mm -hmm. it was it really it, it worked there but it is something that I agree um, hopefully Athens and and Cincinnati um, it can be um, an in an in person element yeah. I do think we can you know take take aspects of this and maybe make part of conferences hybrid in the future so that for those who who can't attend there is the option to to access virtually but yeah in person is definitely uh the, some, something we we all miss now I, one of the things I'm, I'm interested in as well um delving into is you presented at the the conference earlier in the week and what was that experience like you've presented um at nakata events in person but what was the presenter experience uh, like oscar yeah we sort of so i did a sort of a, a pre-con um there on a very abstract concept in a way with, together with peter hagan and actually thomas we were involved in a nakata review we were talking about the concept of practice so this was not a session about writing for the review but um I mean, we, we don't have to go into the review now a lot, but that, that journal really revolves about this idea of connecting theory to practice. And, we, and we, f we, we feel that that is a concept that sort of um, needs to be discussed a lot more and that is valuable um, for, for our members. So we talked about that and it, we had a nice group. I mean, not, nothing like the huge numbers that you now see in some of the sessions where, you know, it's sort of 150 or 200 people attending. We had about 20 people attending. Um, and it was funny because here again, sort of you see advantages and and sort of the limitations. Um, we, we worked with breakout groups. We, we had a sort of a stepwise approach where we talked about different concepts, what they meant to, to participants. And um, I think that as has been observed before by others, that meetings online tend to be more on point and, and um, 
uh, efficient in that sense, sort of less chit chat because everyone feels time is precious. So we won't do that. So the breakout groups, I think were in that sense, way more effective, um, which, which was important now because this, this session was not meant as a socializer. It was really meant to get people to talk about what is theory to you and, and how do you use theory and practice all these things. So we talked a lot about that. So it turned out that um, because we went in so deep, all the breakout rounds were too short. Um, but we could also, we all felt, all three of us, I think, Peter and Ashley and I sort of felt we could sort of accommodate more quickly to what was going on in the breakout groups. Um, but again, the the ability, which I usually do when I create breakout groups in a workshop, I, I, I do not join one group, but I walk around a little bit, you know, to, what's going on here, what's happening there, sort of throw in sort of a few ideas and then move on. And also having the overview um, not just depending on how people report back, but also because you've stopped by each of these groups of what is going on makes it easier to to synthesize things when you're when you're bringing everyone back to sort of more the plenary approach. So, um, and of course here as well, we had a few really good conversations. I met a few people that I'd never met before who who, who came with really interesting perspectives. In this case, both in terms of how theory relates to practice, but also sort of theories that they felt could be applied to advising that I hadn't thought of before, that would have been fun, as you said, to sort of have discussed further, you know, over when you say, when you're, you're getting your stuff together, the session is over, you leave the room and you say, hey, shall we have a coffee and, 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 and continue the conversation. Um, so that, I, that I, I missed as well. And even the fact that, um, there is no opportunity now to run into those people later on during the conference because maybe right after your session they had to go to another one you had to go to another one but so from the present presenter's perspective i was very happy that it was live i mean i i i'm enjoying the uh, the pre-recorded versions actually the, the, the sessions now um and we 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 did one um we recorded the pre-con in case there would be technical uh, issues, but you feel right away that the interaction is different. Um, so it, it, it is as a presenter, and I think many people have done this, but I've also experienced that it's really so important to be aware of the fact that you're using a different medium. You're not in front of a sort of live group of people that you can almost sort of literally touch. Um, and you can't, you know, I like to listen to what people say, even if, it, if I'm not supposed to hear it, you know, I'm a teacher after all. So my ears are always open. And then to pick up something that someone says in the audience and play with that a little bit, sort of, you don't have all those opportunities, yeah, possibilities, but, but you, you, you can keep, it's easier to keep participants to a certain format that you created for them to, to, to make them go, I would almost say, go through the stages that you envision for your workshop. So pros and cons there. By the way, I should say that one of the, the pros of listening to pre-recorded versions, when you, you know, I like to doodle. Um, and uh, when I listen, that makes it easier for me to listen, but sort of what sort of my version, I want to show this sort of my version of doodling, now listening to the only the pre-recorded versions, we're sort of creating this little lunar module. Oh, wow. That, uh, sort of, one of my kids actually, I think, gave this to me a while back, you know, one of those incredibly small sort of uh, models made out of aluminum, so almost impossible to work with that I thought it's a wonderful gift, but I'm never gonna put it together. But this is what sort of what I did while listening to sort of very interesting sessions, so. <laughs> I think that is a wonderful encapsulation, uh, Oscar, that you referred to that as a doodle. And and most of <laughs> us, that would be scribbling on a page. For Oscar, that was putting together an intricate lunar module uh, made of aluminium. Amazing. Um, now, I suppose, as, as we draw to a close, I might put you on, on the spot a little bit and, and ask, um, have have you what are your takeaways uh you know from uh, this this conference um over the last few days well 
there were a few sessions that I really enjoyed and a few perspectives. So this, this constant sort of this growing awareness that we, 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 as a profession, we need to sort of create time to sort of step aside and look at what we're doing and how that fits into the bigger picture of education and find the means to do that is really important. I was, there was one, um, there was a, a sort of a, an on-demand presentation that I saw yesterday about applying NESI findings, so the, the, the student engagement survey findings um, to the sort of the interpretation of the value of advising, even in absence of many advising questions on the on the NESI. Um, but that was just one example, and there were others, um, like for instance, some of those theories that came up um, in in our own precon, uh, where because they they sort of they they remind you again of the fact not only that advising itself is a profession and that there are many ways to do it and many choices you make depending really on that i would say theoretical perspective that you have on 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 the role of advising but it also helps you see um and i i sort of i'm reminded of this a lot in sort of in what i do now because sort of my current work also allows me to take a sort of a bigger view on, on student engagement at our institution than just from the perspective of um teaching at a very small unit and and being involved in advising that i think historically a lot of responsibilities if i may say so that that actually should reside in other places within the institution have implicitly become part of the advising role. I mean, and by which I mean, for instance, that you know, now in many sessions you hear people talk about how do we how do we explain course registration? How do we sort of guide our students through process X? Things like this, and and we really talk about how we can do that and how we can do it more sort of in a more speedy and efficient way. And only I think if you step out of that role there is room to ask yourself the question, why are we doing this in the first place? If admissions um, really, um, or, or, you know, the, the sort of the, the unit, depending on sort of regardless of how it's called, that, that actually processes course registration administratively, cares so much about this sort of being done well by the students, why don't they explain it better to students? Why, why, why do we have to do that? Why this while for the last decades we've come to the realization that advising may be the only logical place for students to go to when they want to reflect on what is it that I want to do? They, I mean, we're spending a lot of time, and you even see it in our own, in our own competencies. I mean, informational is a huge section, and yes, it is important. But it's also become important because others don't do their job informing students. So we we are the go-betweens between many offices and students explaining what those offices really need and want, and how students should sort of sort of appease those processes in a way. And I think during the conference as well, by seeing sort of sort of just on the list as well. I didn't see everything obviously, but sort of topics and, and actual sessions that deal with how to facilitate that part of our work on the one hand, and other sessions that were about sort of taking this more distant perspective, call it scholarly, call it sort of professional, you name it, but to reflect on the role, not just your work, but the role of advising. I think made me realize this once again, we're doing a lot of stuff that we shouldn't be doing, not because students don't need it, but because others should be doing it. Um, so that was that was my takeaway. And th that is not sort of in itself that could be a negative, but a positive about it is that I think as, as a professional, we, we're, we're accumulating more arguments to, to make that case. Um, and we, we're becoming a little bit more vocal, uh, which is a good thing, yeah. Yeah, Oscar, you are always, always insightful. And I think anyone uh, watching will have, well, if they didn't know it before, they certainly know it now. Um, I always enjoy talking to you. And for anyone, watch, for anyone watching, if you want 
more of Oscar, um, you can listen to episode 18 of Adventures in Advising. Um, we have almost an hour long conversation there and we delve uh, into all sorts of topics and uh, Oscar is as engaging as always. Um, Oscar, I just want to say thanks very much for taking the time to chat to me today. You're welcome. I, I thank you again. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed the, the final day of the conference and I'm sure I'll be talking to you again soon. Sure.